This is the moment. The Bachelorette is back. Yeah! And the power. I'm going to fall in love. Is in Jen's hands. And I'm going to do it my way. ABC Mondays. Everything about her is great. I feel so special. Jen's looking like a queen. My men are very, very hot. Someone call 911. <laughs> you are looking so fire. This is the beginning of a new era. The Bachelorette. All new Mondays, 8, 7 central on ABC. And stream on Hulu. Looking for a side hustle that can have a huge impact? Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network in Minneapolis is looking for healthy people ages 18 to 55 to join their upcoming clinical studies and is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000. Get involved today. Check your eligibility now at nucleusnetwork.com. That's nucleusnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, welcome. Thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach Brittle. I'm with Laura Heck. Um, we are nearly a third of the way through the fantasy football season. I like my chances so far. Um, everybody's playing great. Congratulations. This is the week that Laura and I play each other. I'm a little nervous about that. I'm not going to tell her though, because maybe she won't pay attention and I'll get uh, the easy win. Although I have this deep fear that somehow her team is going to thrash my team and I'm never going to hear the end of it. This week, we're playing with a topic that Laura has come up with in her office. Uh, it came up in a session for her, and it's the idea that jungle cats need love too. We all know that we feel a certain freedom to lash out at the ones that we love, and I'm interested in understanding why we do that and what can be done about it, both as the cat or as the recipient. And um, this, we bat around a lot of different ideas, and we talk a little bit about where this comes from and where it could be headed. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. You could be the key to helping change lives. Join a clinical trial with Nucleus Network in Minneapolis and be a part of groundbreaking research. Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network is looking for people with moderate to severe kidney impairment to participate in their upcoming clinical studies. If eligible, your participation could help advance research of investigational medications that are being developed to treat a variety of medical conditions. Nucleus Network is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000 for study participation time. If you or someone you know has kidney disease, check your eligibility for Nucleus Network's upcoming studies now at NucleusNetwork.com. Your participation matters. Learn more about Nucleus at N-U-C-L-E-U-S-Network.com. Again, NucleusNetwork.com. I did go to Disneyland this weekend. It was fun. Um, it's a cool place to be. I am definitely old at the end of the day, probably maybe for the first time in my life, I was like, Oh my God, I can't, I can't do this. Like I can't, I can't continue to walk on these legs. This is not an age thing. Um, I I mean, I'm in my thirties and I will tell you that there was definitely moments where I was like, I cannot continue. I cannot do this anymore. I mean, we're there what eight o'clock to about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So what was that? Um, and I, I, I woke up the next day and I was like, what just happened? Like, what is wrong? We were going to go to a second park. <laughs> we were going to go to Knott's Berry Farm yeah. on, uh, on, and we just didn't, we just did it. You already <laughs> bought tickets and, and no, just we like, didn't, buy, we didn't, we hadn't bought them yet. And so I was just like, Mary, I don't think I can do another dish. She's like me neither. So, you know what, maybe it's not an age thing, but, um, it's not, it was pretty fun. I really wanted to go and just do all the Star Wars stuff again because that place is so cool. I think in the history of this podcast, which we celebrated our five-year anniversary, um, happy anniversary. In case you hadn't heard. <laughs> <laughs> if you heard the last episode, we had a fight. On and the our- one before that. Hey, and Jason sent us a sweet present. That's so nice. Did you get him. a cool present like I got? Yeah. What did you get? Yeah. I got, I guess it's an ashtray or something. It's Maybe a not an dish. ashtray. <laughs> they don't make those anymore. It's like a, it's like for ladies to put their rings on when they wash yeah. their hands and for gentlemen, yeah. like you can put your bar of soap there. Yeah. But, it's um, a soap dish, but it's really clear to me. It's a decorative paperweight thing that I'm going to keep in my, 
in yeah. my in my studio. That will remind you of our forever eternal uh, commitment to Five one another. Year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was reading, by the way, our um, reviews. I just happened to. I was like, oh, I wonder if we're still getting some reviews. <laughs> And I just read a few and they're actually very positive and people I think are starting to turn the corner and liking you, which is really exciting. That's really Um, cool. They said that you are very, very smart and that you have a lot of really great insight and that there's good balance with like my humor um, mm-hmm. that nobody actually said how smart I was, which is unfortunate. Um, <laughs> yeah. but you know, smart. we, we balance each other out. Um, and then someone said, I'm done listening to the podcast because these two, uh, are gonna have an affair. yes, have to yeah. have a level <laughs> of intimacy. I know. Is, I was like, dude, first of all, that's a really bizarre thing to think. And second of all, you went out of your way to write it down. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I mean, so. I can understand that that would make some people uncomfortable, Um, I have to tell you, like I have been, I would say, um, more respectful of the dynamics. I understand there's dynamics that come to play, Mm -hmm. but, um, I can tell you that Zach and I have this conversation actually quite often of like, Mm -hmm. you know, just sort of checking in. And, um, we've had conversations in the past where I've said like, this feels Like this is entering into a level of like maybe intimacy that I'm not comfortable with. And when I say intimacy, I don't want you guys thinking that it's like anything crazy, but it's kind of like, this is stuff that I share, you know, like Mm -hmm. that I wouldn't share with anybody else other than my husband, or this is something that I wouldn't talk about because we're by ourselves right now. Like maybe if we had our spouses with us or friends with us, I could, you know, like open up that dialogue, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm I'm aware of our intimacy. I want to let you know. And yeah. just for the record, there will be no affairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like makes me want to throw up in my mouth. A little bit. I mean, <laughs> do people know it's like a brother or sister relationship? Yeah. Just okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm rolling my eyes. There's so much. We were talking about Disneyland. <laughs> mm-hmm. What were you going to say? Well, I was just, oh, in the time in the, that we've the, been together, yeah, this is what you were In the history of us yeah. um, being in, in this podcast together, I think we've had maybe like four different conversations about Disneyland. I think I've been three times yeah. since we started the podcast. And I have been one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's four. But sure. just for the record, I'm the only one that has children the age of the Disneyland. Disneyland age. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's debatable. Yeah. Um. What else is going on? I wanted to give you an update on my training. It's going very well. I'm super pumped on myself. I have dropped swimming for the last two months uh, so I can focus on. I thought you were talking about your sex school training there for a second. Ooh, that I I can also touch on that, but um, I have a class coming up this weekend. So Mm -hmm. that is also still continuing. But for those of you that are following, you know, this journey of Laura Heck becoming a triathlete, (laughs) I am. It's just both of you. So pay attention. Mm -hmm. All two of you. (laughs) It's really, really neat. I'm enjoying it. I haven't been swimming. I have um, coming up in November, my 100 mile bike ride. Yeah. Um, It's a century, I guess what they're calling it. Do they call them Grand Fondos? Is that how they say it? They, I'm not familiar with that phrase. Okay. I certainly understand the, the concept of a century ride. Yeah. For sure. So that'll be in Tucson in November. And before that, I will do a half marathon. And then after I do those two races, they call these B races. I'm learning that. They're like, if yeah. it's not your yeah. primary race, which is this Ironman, then they're your B races. And so um, once those are done, I'll pick up swimming again. But I'm getting in great shape. I recommend not walking around Disneyland for 14 hours. You look, your training. you look hungover. He's got his hood on <laughs> and like you definitely haven't shaved for a while. And yeah. it's like a, it's a Disneyland yeah. hangover, which I think is a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Totally. So much joy. And then you have the hangover. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is happening in your life? I just told you, I went to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to Vancouver this weekend, going to go up to see right. uh, all those guys and yeah. do their ASL, which is exciting. I haven't been with them in, uh, since before COVID, so that's going to be fun. I always appreciate you coming home from the ASLs because you check out of work, you check into the content, and you always make good notes. And you get kind of like jazzed about mm. certain topics. I learned something new. You yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's Laura Heck, and I'm so excited to tell you about Green Chef. I know you know that I'm obsessed with cooking, and dinner is my favorite meal of the day. 
This used to be a super stressful time where I was like cobbling together ingredients, trying to make a meal. And now it is an absolute delight by having Green Chef prepackaged meals at my fingertips. Green Chef now has 30 different meals to choose from. Whether you're a carnivore or a pescatarian or a vegetarian or you're eating paleo, you're mixing it all up. Green Chef has meals tailored to all of your interests. The difference that I see with Green Chef is that all of the prep work has been done for you. That means that the sauces have been pre-made, they've been pre-measured. All of your dicing, your cutting, your mincing, it's all done. Meals are taking less than 25 minutes, which is amazing. My husband's biggest complaint with previous meal kits has been the waste. Green Chef is different. It is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset. So 100% of their carbon footprint has been offset as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Look, I could talk to you about food all day long, but please know that I am jamming on Green Chef. Do you see what I did there? And I want you to have this experience in your kitchen and with your family. So go to greenchef.com slash MTR135. Use the code MTR135 to get $135 off across five boxes. And your first order ships for free. Go to greenchef.com forward slash MTR135 for your first order. I learned something new. This is really great. Today's episode title is called Jungle Cats Need Love Too. And I wanted to put that out there so that Jason didn't choose a title, which <laughs> FYI, my girlfriend, she was, we were on our bike ride and she goes, are you a gap model? And I said, why would you insinuate that? And she said, because your podcast said that you were um, a gap model. And I was like, what is Jason writing? What is he putting out there? I don't know. That was a dream of mine um, from yeah. a previous episode that I was a gap model. Oh, and it. I had to tell her I'm not a gap model. But if you want to pay for my kid to be a model, I wouldn't hate that. But um, you, you pay for my kid to be a model. Oh, yeah. I think Holden is very catalog looking. He could he could do some modeling. <laughs> yeah, if that's you, a good way to describe Holden. Yeah, he is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. So if you if you're the powers of being, you're looking for just a, you know, a real cheesy kid. Yeah, um, that's the guy. But I was talking to. Uh, and I got their permission clients yesterday yeah. and okay. what came out of it. And I have to preface this with these particular clients. If they had um, a book, I think they would make a lot of money. The two of them are so okay. talented when it comes to wordsmithing that I, as a therapist, am oftentimes just sort of like writing down funny phrases that they say or metaphors that they use. I think you in general would really enjoy them. And, uh, at some point the phrase, yes, but jungle cats need love too came okay. out. And I was like, Hey guys, can I just steal that for my next podcast episode? And yeah. they gave me full permission to talk about this okay. topic. So that's what does what, it mean? Well, it came out of this episode where the female was super triggered and she got triggered. She was over bird, like just totally toast, right? As a mom. And she was anxious and she just like hit her. She was redlining super hard and she's texting with her husband and her husband's trying to be there for her. And, and she's got the kids and she's just like super overburdened. And, um, basically what happens is that in the process of attempting to connect with her husband, she's the jungle cat in this situation. Okay. In an attempt to connect and reaching out, it comes across as her swiping. And he, he was mm. like, I don't know how to come close to you when you are a jungle cat in the trees, swiping and hissing. Mm. And she goes, you know, I mean, like in the moment she was like, yes, but jungle cats need love too. And I was like, <laughs> Ooh, let's talk about this. This is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think most, well, not most of the time, but like, I think our attempts to reach out and connect with our partner is not always like the lovely moments mm -hmm. when you're snuggled up on the couch and you're soft and gentle mm -hmm. and you're pawing at them and you're needing them and you're like, I want some attention and affection. Sometimes mm -hmm. those attempts to reach out and connect are wrapped up in all sorts of swiping and hissing and mm -hmm. criticism. And it's really hard to respond to that. And that was their question. They're like, what do we do in these moments? And so I wanted to talk about that on the podcast. Like, how do you give jungle cats love? Yeah, I'm into it. And it, the first thing I think of, of course, is like, um, <laughs> we went to back to school night the other night and uh, the teachers that we were meeting, we kept asking them about 
our kid, our teenager. And she was like, the teachers would be like, oh my God, she's such a delight. I really mm-hmm. enjoy her. She's so polite. And I'm like, who are, are we talking, talking about the about? same student? Like, what is, what is this? I'm like, it's great. I'm really glad to hear it. But, you know, basically boils down to that people act out when they feel safest. Um, right. Wait, so they act out when they feel safest. Yeah, so this kid that we recognize, the mm-hmm. one who is kind mm-hmm. of snarky and mean and like sullen and doesn't participate or cooperate or talks back. They, she does that at her house. She doesn't do that at school um, where she like the stakes are a little bit higher and the consequences, but when she comes home, she can throw her tantrums. It's just, I mean, it's just kind of the way we, well, you're committed. There's a level of commitment. Totally. Like she knows That's exactly. that. Yeah. No matter what, you're still going to be there. Yeah. Which is so in the parlance of your client hour, it's like at home, my 15 year old can be a jungle cat, but at school she can't. Mm-hmm. And so part of what has to happen is that you understand that it's almost a privilege to be swiped at mm-hmm. because you are safe. You can handle it. You can, you can sort of be there. That's a little bit harder to do when it feels like a, like an attack. But then I think you go back to who, who are we talking about? You know, this adorable kid that I've raised from minute one or this woman that I married and who is a little feisty or this man who um, is, you know, hungry, angry, lonely, tired after a long day as of work, like still good people, but just lashing out and, and what is it? Is it a cry for help? Is it a cry for attention? Mm-hmm. Or is it something I need to really protect myself from? And I think when when we can understand that jungle cats need love too, part of it is understanding that this cat is somebody that we really cherish, you know, mm-hmm. not just a, a foe that's been created in the moment. Mm-hmm. So I, I like having this conversation with clients because I, I think when you wrap your head around the second part, the part about how being able to be feisty or being able to act out or being able to engage in conflict is a, is one of the privileges that you have, then you can go, you can get back to what we're really about. So I always tell clients when you, when you enter into a long-term committed relationship with someone, you automatically get two privileges that you do not have in the public sector. You don't have in the world. Right. And one of them is the privilege of soliciting sex, Mm -hmm. which is like, Hey, can I, you want to have sex? Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's have sex. We'll do it later. You can't do that at your job. You can't Mm -hmm. do that at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in the sidelines of the soccer game. Like you have to that you, you're you not allowed. Right. Um, you'd get fired or you'd get sued or something. The other one is that you get the privilege to sort of show out your worst. You get to throw tantrums, mm. which again, you can't do at your job. You can't do on the sideline of the soccer game. I mean, I guess you can. I've thrown pl- plenty on the sideline of a soccer game, but yeah. um, you know, you can't really do it at the grocery store. It's just not, it's not allowed. Right. Um, so if, if, if soliciting sex is allowed and if throwing tantrums is allowed, um, well, the first one, that sounds great. The second one, that's kind of a bummer unless both lead to intimacy. Right. If you can get to intimacy through conflict, mm-hmm. then you're doing it right. And I think that's the part that I think your your um, your client is noting, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's conflict here, but what's really here is this desire to connect, this desire, this feline desire to be cuddled and, and loved and supported mm-hmm. um, and snuggled, you know, I it's just such a bummer because I do hear this a lot, this complaint, which is you're so lovely, like everybody in the outside world that interacts with you gets the best version of you. Mm -hmm. They get, you know, like fun dad, they get like charismatic dad, they get like the yes guy. Yeah. I had a client, this is another one. I had a client yesterday say something like, um, can I tell you one of the other complaints is that you interrupt me a lot. That's I know we're just, we're talking about, I'm, I want to, I wasn't done though. I know, I know, but we're, we're talking about the same thing. This okay. is, this is All right. because, okay. because I wanted to add one to the list, which yes. is if the client, if, if the, if I was the husband and the wife was named Laura Heck, he says something like, oh yeah, when we're out there, it's always the Laura Heck show. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. you're so lovely. Everybody loves you. It's totally. the Laura Heck show kind of like and inside. It's a little bit different. So I apologize for cutting you off, but that is uh, no, I don't even need to say, to- but <clears throat> I'm sorry for cutting you off. And there was a collection of things we were trying to, to, yeah, you wanted to, to demonstrate add. and that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. I accept your apology. Thank you um, so much. You're welcome. I, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome for being welcome. Zach and Laura actively working on their relationship <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. No, I get it. I heard it happening as it was happening. I'm sorry about that, but, uh, and I, and I don't even mean to say, but uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, um okay. So, what do you do though? Like in this moment, because what we figured out. Did you finish out, your point? Did you finish your po- the point you're making? See, that's the problem with interrupting. Is like, I know. Like I need to get derailed. better about this. Yeah. It also reminds me of like, this is a bad Saturday in life sketch because everything you're going to start talking and be like, now is a good time for you to start. You know? <laughs> 
Saturday Night Live. Or Saturday Night Live. Bad at Saturday Night Live. Okay. Okay. The best I'm, part I'm though is that our listeners can go back and they can like rewind, but I have no idea. I'm not tracking. I'm, I have zero, yeah. zero caffeine in my body today. So what do we do in the case when you have a jungle cat, when you have a client that is clearly escalated and like, uh, we talk about, I've mentioned this before with like polyvagal theory is that you can have the opportunity to connect with your partner when you are feeling calm and calibrated and safe and warm and all of these things that gives you the opportunity to connect. And so that's when you're in your ventral state. And what happens is this particular woman, she's like, Hey, I'm starting to redline here. I'm freaking out. I am like completely escalated internally. I'm angry with the kids. I'm, you know, just like, I am not safe right now. And interestingly, what she's doing is she's attempting to reach out to her partner in hopes that he might be able to help regulate her and bring her more to like a ventral state. But unfortunately, when he when she reaches out to him and she's swiping and she's hissing and she's critical and she's pissed off and like all these things are happening because she's not in a cool, calm, collected state. She ends up instead of relying on him to be this like ventral, warm, safe place for her to go to. She ends up activating him because what's coming across is criticism. You're not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm in this situation because of you. I mean, I do this every time I'm in, I'm in traffic. I end up like it's my husband's fault at some point. And so Mm -hmm. I end up like texting him or calling him or doing all the things you shouldn't be doing while you're driving a vehicle. And I make it his, his, like it's his issue. And that's my way of just kind of like trying to attempt to connect in hopes that he might be able to like bring me off of the the ledge Mm -hmm. a little bit, but I send him into a spiral. So the problem is that she's wanting something soft and cuddly to be with, but instead what she's getting is she's turning the soft and cuddly guy into, uh, into a little bit of a a Panther as well. Um, and so the question is, what do you do in those situations? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. I mean, part of, part of, as you ask that question, I go, what does who do? Right. Because, you know, part of, part of what she needs to learn how to do is ask for what she really needs and just, um, and understand even that, that she, if she can label it some, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of it being extremely explicit, especially early on when you're trying to learn this stuff mm-hmm. and she might just need to say, Hey, I'm in my jungle cat mode and you might need to ignore me for the next totally. 10 minutes. And then he can go, great. I'm good. I don't have to, I don't actually have to respond to any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. I can just be like, let's, let's run around the field here until we're tired. <laughs> you ever watch videos of these cats like hunting antelope and sometimes they just like chase each other for 15 seconds and then they both just stop. And then they chase again. Then they chase again for like a little bit later, but like they just kind of, it's so much as like a game of tag and the an- antelope is like, I, I look, <laughs> dude, like, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that's kind of part of what it is. I mean, then, and, and then what is the, the person who's being swiped at do? I think, I mean, again, I, part of what I think makes couples therapy work or couples work work is when the individuals are doing their work. Mm-hmm. So if he feels like he's being swiped at in this story that you're t- t- describing so, somewhere, he has to understand his own sort of integrity and dignity and, yeah. you know, stability that helps him under, that helps him realize that this isn't in fact a jungle cat that's swiping at him. Mm-hmm. It is a, is a human being mm-hmm. whom he loves. Mm-hmm. And but the body doesn't, it doesn't care. That's the thing is like, you can rationalize and you can say, this is not a jungle cat. This is my wife Mm -hmm. freaking the F out because she is so just overstimulated and overcooked in all sorts of ways. He can rationalize with his brain. This is not a jungle Mm -hmm. cat, but his body has already taken over. He has now moved into a place of, I feel attacked. I feel criticized. And now I'm trying to solve the problem and I can't because now she's escalating Mm -hmm. even further which sends me even further into escalation internally. And so that's kind of the problem is like, hey, I can give you all the words to rationalize and like identify what's going on for you, but your body is hijacking you at some Mm -hmm. state. This is where Dr. Gottman talks about emotional flooding and he's Mm -hmm. flooding so quickly. So the way that, I I mean, I thought I was like, I'm so glad we're having therapy right now because what Mm -hmm. we're able to do is we're talking about what happened but you're no longer escalated. You're able to talk about what's Mm. going on or what happened in that situation from Mm -hmm. a pulled back view and say, well, here's what was really going on for me. I was really overwhelmed and I was reaching for you for support. 
Okay. Mm. Well, here's what was going on for me. I was being attacked. That part, accurate and true. Like she was Mm -hmm. definitely being critical. And that was a part of what was coming across. And when he feels that criticism, he escalates. When he can't solve the problem and de-escalate her, he escalates. So now you have two individuals that are not able to connect, not able to solve the problem in Mm -hmm. the moment. So I would say like in the short term, what do you do? Like you detach a little bit and you say, Mm -hmm. you know, what's going on? I can see that you are, I want to be there for you. I really do. But unfortunately now I am in that place too. Like I am Mm -hmm. also redlining and there's no way we can be together with each other when we're both redlining. Mm -hmm. So if he's not able to maintain that, soft, warm, comfortable place. And he ends up escalating as a result of trying to be there for her. Um, then they both need to be able to identify for themselves when they need to call it quits. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about. I think, yes. And this is where if he can't maintain it, it is the priority for him to learn how to maintain it, how to dial it down a little bit. Maybe that's, maybe that's his own therapy, his own meditation, his own exercise or whatever that helps him gain enough clarity um, and I think, you know, there's something to be said too, for, I kind of feel like right now we're, we're repeating stuff that we've said very recently, but that's actually kind of the point. Like right. you might just need to repeat, repeat, repeat mm-hmm. the stuff that, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I was driving somewhere, I was driving somewhere the other day and I heard a lyric on the radio and it was a very simple lyric. You've heard it a million times. It, it was be here now, which is a Ray LaMontagne song. And, um, but that wasn't the song I was listening to it was some other thing. And I was like, man, that is such good and real advice. Like it's so deep. And I was like, I don't think I had any concept of what that meant when I was 30 Hmm. or 25 or 35 or 40 or 45. Like, but now that I'm a little bit older, I'm like, oh yeah, just be, you know, be Mm -hmm. here. So basically what I'm speaking to is the idea that like sometimes it's repetition or practice or just, you know, Hmm. maturity that helps you stay calm in the situations that could, uh, that may would have, maybe would have escalated you uh, five years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, So just stay on the path basically. Like, keep doing the good work because you don't learn this stuff overnight for sure. Mm -hmm. You might've heard a rumor that I went to Disneyland this weekend, which was amazing and fun and really magical as it should be um, there with my kids and kind of letting them enjoy life. But I tell you what, I'm not getting any younger. At the end of the day, my body was totally racked um, and I was just bent over. I had to have one of my kids tie my shoes and it just made me think about the fact that life is short and that we have a responsibility to steward uh, that as much as possible, including our current health and our future health, um, especially for my kids. It's scary being out there and there's lots of threats, as you know. There are dangers lurking around every single corner, as I found out when I was uh, at the park. But one thing that doesn't have to be scary is, is getting life insurance. Fabric by Gerber Life was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. I think getting life insurance is simply the right thing to do, um, and but it gets a bad rap because it can be complicated. Fabric makes it really easy. It's a digital experience. It's all online and it's all on your time. If you need extra support, Fabric's team of licensed insurance agents can answer questions for you all along the way. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply. You can see your quote, then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required, which I think would come in handy for me, at least between now and the time that I recover. There are over 1,600 five-star reviews on trustpilot.com. You can feel confident that you're getting a high-quality policy that is perfect for your family. Plus, Fabric has a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can cancel at any time. So protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash MTR. That's meetfabric.com slash MTR. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash MTR. Policies are issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. They're not available in certain states and prices may be subject to underwriting and health questions. Life is short. Do the things that matter. Go to Disneyland. Take care of your body. Take care of your kids. Get life insurance. We've been here for five years. And if you've been listening for five years, I think that's rare. Uh, Thanks for hanging out with us for five years. That's kind of amazing. But it might be, you might be in a season in your life where it makes sense to go back and listen to some of the older episodes Mm. and they're just going to resonate differently. And over time, Zach and I have shared the same advice over and over and over, but we've just maybe said it differently. Um, And we've just kind of been on repeat, but it's going to resonate differently is I think 
important to think. Yeah, about. I mean, it resonates for me differently. I yeah. just. Oh my gosh, I, you were in such a different. Pl- oh, we have like flopped roles since we started <laughs> this. <laughs> Okay. But I, th- I mean, every once in a while I go through these phases when I was like, you know, I'm a pretty good therapist. I should use some of this stuff in my own house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's know? that work so, out? That's, well, I, that's where I am now. I'm like, I'm going to try some of this stuff out and see if it works. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. But I, but I would say that like part of me being in different places, I'm much more comfortable in my own skin. Mm-hmm. And so when I am in tension with any of them, with Rebecca or the girls, the two girls, um, I'm much slower to responsiveness. Like I, I, I understand that these are not jungle cats trying to murder me. Mm-hmm. They are, they are people, human beings who are, you know, looking for some other stimulus and they're doing it in the best way they know how in that moment. So. I, I mean, that's a real skill. I think a lot of people are like, Zach, how did you get to that point? How did you get to the place where you were yeah. able to think logically through the situation rather than react? And yeah, honestly, it's just practice. Oh, it's practice. I think it's individual therapy. I think that mindfulness is really important. Being able to slow things down. Why are you laughing? My story of the last few years is I've just thrown, I think we've used this metaphor. I throw, I threw a bunch of pot of spaghetti against the wall and just mm-hmm. tried to see what would stick. Meeny, meeny, miny, well. I think about the stuff that I did. I stood in a river. I hugged an actual tree, <laughs> you know? I mean, I just, whatever, whatever works, man. I'm, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You've tried it all. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I tried what I tried and, I think, I think again, some stuff sticks and some stuff doesn't stick. So Mm -hmm. that's the, that's the main thing. My thing is if there's something in my life that I'm trying to chase or pursue or get better at, I make it really, really difficult to not stumble upon that. Like I immerse myself Mm -hmm. into it right now. I will tell you that we're kind of on this, a little bit of a health journey, trying to figure out like inflammation and how to reduce inflammation. And so we've actually started to remove things like alcohol from our diet. And I've mentioned like, I'm not caffeinated right now. I'm trying not to be on caffeine, just kind of like trying to set the bar sort of Mm -hmm. uh, like a, a fresh start, if you will. And I thought, if I'm going to keep this up for the long term, this isn't just going to be something I do for the week. I have to immerse myself in it. And so I started looking mm. up books and podcasts and like, mm. what do I need to put on the sign on the refrigerator that helps to remind me that this is the goal that I'm chasing and all of these things. And obviously, if you are trying to better your relationship and you're listening to this podcast, clearly you're on that path of trying to immerse yourself in, in that. Why are you smiling at me? Because you're smart. Uh, you're just a really smart lady. There is so much sarcasm in there. I can't even <laughs> no, handle. No, no. I just think uh, you, you say things sometimes that make me laugh. Like if you are, if you are trying to listen, if you're trying to work on your relationship and you're listening to this podcast and I'm like, well, that's, yeah, that's that is what they they're are. doing. That's, that's exactly. Well, that's exactly I'm what's batting a hundred or a thousand. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. A thousand. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, I am 100% correct. <laughs> If you are listening to this podcast, then my voice is hitting your eardrum right now. (laughs) That is a thing that is happening. I can guarantee it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. All right. We're starting to, the wheels are coming off. They go round and round. (laughs) Let's land. Um, Oh, I have to tell you, my mom's coming down. She's, she's coming today and I'm showing her, this is such a bummer, you guys. Uh, I'm actually, I'm just going to share this on the podcast because it's cringeworthy and I want you all to know just the realistic life of what I, what it's like to be Laura Heck. Um, so we bought this house. A little little bit more about the Laura Heck show. Yeah. We bought this house. I went in, I showed it to Holden. I'm just sort of like walking through it because we bought it. We bought it fully furnished everything. Basically like, Hey, if you take a snapshot of this picture, of this house, everything that's in it, we want it. I want to walk in. Stop. You did it again. Stop. If you take a snapshot of it, this picture. <laughs> Focus. I'm focused. Okay. I'm focused. So we walk in and basically they took all the cool stuff off the walls. There's like nails hanging out. I mean, it just does not look like the house that we purchased. It wasn't part uh, of the agreement. It's such a bummer. I was so excited to have my mom walk into basically this Airbnb that's like beautiful yeah. and decorated. And they came through and they just took like, like, a, I don't know, it looks like a ransack. Like they came in, like stuffed things and like their little, they call those ghillie bags. I don't know. Um, but I was really bummed out and then I got nervous and then I was like, uh oh, I got to go to the bathroom. I got nervous and I went to the bathroom and you know what? Went don't to- tell me they took the toilet. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't 
didn't take the toilet, but they turned the water off. So now, oh. now my mom is going to, I'm going to cut. I'm like, mom, let's go look at your new place. And um, by the way, the water's off. And, and uh, by the way, I got nervous last night and I used the toilet. And, That's a story for the days right there. We'll see if it makes the cut, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> what is that story? I left my mom a present. That's what happened. Oh my gosh. Here's your new house. I left you a present. Like oh I Lord. never stopped being the annoying daughter. Okay. Okay. You we really thing? should have landed that plane sooner. <laughs> that one was just for you. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio and, um, you know, all of your patience and grace when sometimes we go a little off the rails, but hopefully you are entertained on your road trips, on your runs, on your walks, on your laundry folding adventures. Um, thank you, by the way, to our sponsors, Fabric and Green Chef. They help to keep the lights on and podcasts of high quality information like this coming to your eardrums. Thanks for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday. Looking for a side hustle that can have a huge impact? Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network in Minneapolis is looking for healthy people ages 18 to 55 to join their upcoming clinical studies and is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000. Get involved today. Check your eligibility now at nucleusnetwork.com. That's nucleusnetwork.com.